Welcome back to another episode of The Vet, The Bet, and The Casual. How you doing, baby boy? You know, son, we're, 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 we're actually coming back down to earth just a bit. We're probably floating on clouds still, but, um, you know, we had, we had a very lovely personal outing, but I think in terms of our public bets, we uh, could have come away a bit better with how good we did. Yeah, I mean, we went two and two and posted plays. Uh, you know, our boy Dan- Tanner Boser let us down on that parlay, which kind of swung the night. In terms of posted plays, we had a, you know, a great finish to the night, mm-hmm. calling Glover Teixeira to finish. So, yeah, overall, you know, it was a pretty successful card. We'll try and be better with our posted plays, but, mm-hmm. you know, two and two is not the worst thing in the world. Right. It's funny because you get on that high horse a little bit and you're like, no, fuck it, we should go perfect. Uh, big shout out to Arlovsky, right? Like, he was kind of someone I was, I was kind of worried about for kind of our full card parlays and some of our bigger parlays and obviously our, our public one because – you know, we're seeing this rise of the of, of the vet, right? Like certain guys are getting thrown to the wolves a little bit, and you know, not to throw anything against Thiago Santos because he was very much a worthy comp- opponent. But you know, Glover share is a monster, bro. I think we're going to be seeing a new champion. I, I really do. Yeah, and I, I, you know, touching you on that point again, I think it's so much about motivation, right? And mm-hmm. you know, Arlovsky definitely had motivation to show the world mm-hmm. again who he was. It was amazing to see Glover kind of come back from what we were talking about in the last week show to kind of see that that win streak really really flourish like he's getting better like he said yeah and to do that at that age is very impressive yeah i mean you kind of saw that fight did you did you watch the the final fix i know you were uh, you were out and about a little bit on uh, saturday night yeah yeah trying to get up to this cottage but yeah you know i, I did catch it it was uh you know he, he he kind of scared me a little bit in the beginning taking you know some mean shots from santos but he withstood them kept himself alive and, you know, really showed out in that tw- second and third round. And that is why I'm so proud of you because you kind of described exactly what a person kind of sees from a Glover to share. Um, you talk to anyone who's watched him f- a fight quite a lot. That beginning part of what you described is what everyone kind of has seen. That mm-hmm. resilience from someone, I think it almost comes without age, right? We're seeing it, you know, 10 years later almost. And then it just, it's his style of fighting, man. It's hard to put a guy like that away. Yeah, he's, you know, that dad strength. <laughs> right? He's, he's, he's a good guy, man. It's, it's a beautiful thing. I love to see it. Yeah, absolutely. So we got a nice, good card coming up. We'll be aiming to bounce back for our posted plays. And, uh, you know, anything else you want to touch on before we jump right into it? No, let's get, let's, let's get it rolling. All right, perfect. So first up, we got Tony Gravely versus Geraldo DeFritis. Uh, you know, both are coming off mm-hmm. of a loss. We saw Gravely come out and lose to uh, Brett Johns, who we've seen recently. So, you know, both guys will be looking to get back on track. What do you see here? Pedro Munoz and Aljamain Sterling is elite competition. So, you know, kudos to Brett Johns, but also kudos to Gravely, right? 0-1 against really good competition. I think we're going to see a guy, you know, good wrestler, but I also feel like is it going to be someone that we can actually see – dominate the striking it's going to be tough against the guy who's going to try to fight long i think he's going to be able to get the guy to the ground but you know even he gets reversed a little bit so it's going to be one of those back and forth fights and i think what's going to really stand out is here can freitas use his distance striking can we see a guy kind of you know dictate the fight from a distance and make sure that a guy doesn't you know keep coming in and keep putting me against the fence and put me to the ground because you know that's what's going to happen in the fight and if you're a guy that you know chooses to get tired or might have an issue with any type of cardio when it comes to against the fence, uh, trying to get out of positions. It's one of the more tiring parts of the sport. That could be tough. Yeah, he's really going to have to use his height advantage and reach there to try and keep that distance. And that's where I'm kind of worried, right? And so when I'm looking at lines, I mean, I- I'm thinking, you know, Gravely should be about a plus 105 to a minus 200 favorite. But at the same time, you know, we could see a plus 180, maybe a minus 115 on Freitas. He's actually, uh, Gravely's, uh, you know, right on the upper echelon of your range there. He's a minus 190 favorite going into this one. Beautiful. So so that's, that's actually some value there. But I will say that I do think this fight is way too close to call. I think it's going to be depending on coaching, game plan. And you know what, Pies? Sometimes when we got to base things on that, it, it just doesn't go our way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, stay tuned for that one. But it doesn't sound like we have an initial lean on that one. So up next, we got one of the three ladies uh, Mm -hmm. fights on the card. You know, I'm very excited for these. There's a bunch of good ones. So let's kick it off with Randa Marcos versus Tanako Murata. 
uh, Martos, she actually, uh, I think she had a loss recently against uh, our girl Jin Yang, right? Or no, G Gadella, Gadella. We actually saw her fight last last card. Mm -hmm. And Gadella, I mean, she she's the one that uh, obviously, unfortunately, you know, loses against really good fighters. So right now she's, mm -hmm. she's seeing some of the younger talent come in and, and struggling in the later rounds. And that's kind of what we said last week as well. Yeah, and you know, we're seeing another prospect come in in Kanako making her UFC debut. So I'm pretty interested to see how Marcos can deal with that. Yeah, so the one thing about Murata, we have to be very careful here because it's her UFC debut. Japanese fighters tend to have bad luck in the UFC and a lot of fighters on Ryzen. I mean, uh, Ryzen's one of those leagues where I just, I'm a little questioning, you know, I'm a little, in terms of the seriousness, in terms of, you know, there's some men that have, you know, they, they're legends in the pride game too, but, you know, back in the day, we were allowed to do some things to be better and to be stronger. And, you know, I don't think they have any rules that really, you know, as... The UFC's adopted USADA under the ESPN banner. I don't see things like that happening out in Japan. So with that said, um, it's a bit of a different arena when it comes to fights. And I think Marcos, you know, the one thing about a record, despite that 10 and 9 and 1, it's against really good fighters. If there's one thing I mm -hmm. want to kind of give her credit for, it's going the distance against Mackenzie Dern. If there was one thing I was quite surprised you didn't bring up, but she's another Canadian girl and obviously pretty good looking. <laughs> yeah, she sure is. And, you know, I'm trying not to show my bias too much towards my Canadian fighters after, you know, <laughs> Bozer let us down a little bit last weekend. But. Hey, man, the heart's in the right place. You know, money's money, but heart's in the right place. That's why you're still the casual. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, I actually like our girl's chances here. And so even when I'm thinking about odds, you know, she's going to be a bit of a bigger fighter. She's fought such competition over here, you know, tackling the fact that, I just don't think the Japanese competition is where is where it's at right now, especially in terms of UFC, you know, rules, UFC fighters, camps, you know, everything. It's just different. Uh, and, and she has to come into, you know, that arena big time when it comes to Vegas. And so Marcos minus 130 at best a plus 120 plus 130. But that's me thinking there's some interesting juice worldwide on Murata. And I would put Murata at maybe a minus 110, minus 120 max, and maybe as low as a minus, or sorry, as a plus 160, plus 170. Ooh, the, these are going to get you excited, man. This is going to get the juices flowing for you. But <laughs> Murata comes in actually at like a minus 170 favorite. They're actually giving quite nice odds on Marcos. Wow, that's actually just under my, wow. Pies. Pies, today's the day. Pies, today's the day. You know what? Let's hop on over. We don't over. wait, Dave. We don't wait. Let's hop on over right now, shall we? <laughs> <sighs> All right. So clearly make sure you lay Marcos now. It looks like that's something we're going to take early. And yeah, not going to wait to lose uh, value on that line for sure. Yep. Plus 162 laid. Count it. Done. Canadian girl, let's go. Fantastic. All right, so up next, we have a little uh, Luis Smolka action versus Jose Alberto Quinones. Is that how you say his last name? Yeah, Quinones. Yeah, perfect. Quinones. All yeah, right. So, yeah, both of these guys, you know, seems like a lot of the, the fighters on this card are looking for redemption. Uh, both of these guys have lost their last two out of three coming into this one. Uh, Smolka, we saw lose against our boy Casey Kenny recently. Mm -hmm. uh, My boy. Versus, you know, El Taco lost to Nathaniel Wood. So guys that were familiar with that they lost to recently. I'm really excited that because, you know what, you pumped this fight up even better than I could. You know, I'm really impressed with you remembering those things. And then, you know, let's let's take a look at them in a bit more detail. I mean, Smolka is that, that more of a veteran fighter. Right? We've got that 16-7 record, 2-2 two two UFC. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He can take some damage. I think he's the kind of guy that it's very difficult to knock him out. I mean, I don't think he's – yeah, he's never been knocked out. Even Casey Kenny, you know, uh, subbed him in the first. So, I think yeah, it's – subbed him, yeah. That, and he attacks the body pretty well. I see some 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 juice there. I, I see he's the kind of guy that's going to be underrated in the classic sense. But, I mean, Quinones is, is that ultimate fighter, Latin America season one uh, finalist. He's going to be a guy that we're going to see, you know, try to be a distant striker. But, again – Quinones has lost against a really good competition as well. Sean O'Malley, uh, Nathaniel Wood, and Alejandro Perez, who's another tough guy. I mean, these are all fighters who, over the course of the UFC, you know, not everyone's going to be a champion, you know, but there's going to be really good fighters. And these are the guys that all get you excited for a fight. Nathaniel Wood just fought Casey Kenny, and, I mean, that fight was phenomenal. 
Phenomenal, phenomenal. And so yeah, and just I, as a, a quick side yeah. note on Quinone is there, I mean, I know we're pretty big challenge fans. Don't you think if Jordan from the challenge was a UFC fighter, he would look like this man? That's exactly what he'd look like. Good call. This is Mexican <laughs> Jordan. Holler. My boy Jordan, challenge legend, MTV, holler. <laughs> So in terms of uh, odds for this one, well, where do you kind of see this landing? So, I mean, in terms of Quinones, I think the, the level of competition plays a part here. So we're going to give him some kind of juice there in terms of me, this being close to a pick him and give him that minus 110, minus 20, minus 120. But I also think Smoka comes in with that with that chance to just last. And I don't think Quinones does well with a guy that might be able to take him to the ground and maybe even... You know, show some resiliency in the second, third rounds. And so you might even see him at a plus 170, plus 180, with Smoka coming in I, at maybe a plus one, yeah, so it minus is, 180. Your initial, yeah, your initial instinct was actually right on the money. Mm -hmm. It's pretty close to a pick. Smoka comes mm -hmm. in as a, you know, a slight favorite, about minus 140, mm -hmm. 145 there. Yeah, and you know, it's a tough it's a tough one to call, but something I would consider is maybe even an under. If one of these guys, you know, get tired, I think it's just something where, they're going to put on a show, my friend. I think Paisan, if there was a mm. fight where you, this is an underrated card right now. And I know they're putting, they're kind of picking up the pieces and trying to put this card together. But I mean, this is one of those fights I would kind of mark on the card and be like, hey, you know, make sure you're in this your This is one to, to watch. Hundred percent. For sure. And you know, touching back on what you just said there, mm -hmm. like kudos to the UFC. You know, there's been a lot of drops and, you know, a lot of people's different circumstances coming into play this card, but kudos to them for still getting the card. <laughs> oh man all right and so the next one up is alex moreno versus reese mckee i know we're excited about this one our boy reese you know he's lost to shamaya as someone who we you know follow on the regular so a couple of credible losses in both these guys arsenal recently so this will be interesting to see them go head to head mm -hmm. And so here's where I kind of like, I can sum this up really well because we're going to see the longer, skinnier distance striker in Rice McKee. And we saw what happened when, you know, a guy like Kazma Chmaev was able to, you know, show his dominance. You know, actually, I, I actually thought uh, Rice McKee stayed in there a lot longer than people gave him credit for. You know, mm -hmm. we, we know, we both know, we both sprinkled a little bit just to see if maybe something would happen. You got to go, you got to oh, put yeah. a little, a five, little five ten piece on a guy just to see if maybe he can do a little something special. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we made money at Shemaya for the only possibility we could, and it's over now. So we've come to our decisions on that. And, you know, good highlight reel for the other men. I think Morono is in the same position, right? He fought the guy who's now almost fighting on a main event card, but uh, luckily we had our boy Paul Felder step in. We love you, Paul. Keep that shit going. Um, but yeah, I mean, he got knocked the fuck out. And I, I think I got you to pull that shit up, did I not? I got that clip up right now. Let me fire it up. Let's do it. Because that's a, that's a knockout where uh, our boy, you know. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. He's not knocked yet, but he was stumbling. He was stumbling. He was stumbling? Okay. Oh, okay. now he's gone. Now he's gone. Now he's gone. Yeah. Oh, so oh, oh, oh. That's the thing. So we'll get into the power that we see from our board chaos right there a little later. But one thing I want to mention is just Alex Morono should be a very well-coached fighter here. I think he's going to be the smaller but bulkier fighter i think he should be good enough to say i need to get inside maybe get him against the fence do some clinching if i really you know have a boner for striking let me throw some shots in the dirty boxing areas and really fight for that uh, ground position because i think if he can get in close i mean chimaev was really able to kind of i mean that's a different breed but it's just the idea of getting a guy to the ground who's who's, who's longer you know he's got the limbs that you can yeah. kind of grab and, 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 and try to get that submission on you know Eliminate that reach. Eliminate that height advantage. Exactly. Takedowns. So in terms of work fit submissions, in terms of odds, who who do you think is going to be favored here? That's where I'd have to give the edge to Alex Morono. And so for me, I have him listed at probably a minus 180. I'd give him close to a minus 110 to respect the distance striker coming alive. But I don't Oh, see... you, you you worked on Vegas on this one, huh? You worked at Vegas for this one? Why? What happened? Because I think Rice McKee <laughs> could still be the underdog here at plus 130, even a plus 190. But... You, you called it immediately. Minus 190 favorite for Morono. Wow. And so what's our boy McKee at? I had a plus 130, plus uh, 190 listing. 170, actually. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so you see value there on Mr. McKee, eh? 
Uh, to be honest, no. I would take the I would take the minus. Uh, I would take the minus. One ninety on Morono, yeah, right? Yeah, because, okay. because I, I'm Absolutely. taking I'm taking I'm taking the coaching edge on that one. I think that's one of our beautiful yes. minus one twenties there. I just think McKee has to stick to his game plan. But Morono is a fighter who's going to see a guy who just beat him in a potential main event, but now definitely, like we mentioned, is not. Um, mm -hmm. You know, get get that get that, that get that fight. You know, and I, I think that's. That's something that's going to eat at you, and I think that's something that's going to motivate you. I think that's something that's going to make you want to beat the guy, you know, who's just coming to UFC, who's definitely young enough to make his mark. I mean, in the UFC, if he really needs to, but it's your time to kind of really show because that 17, 17 and six record, I think, represents you as an MMA fighter, but you do have to kind of stand out as a UFC fighter to, to kind of have a future there. Yeah, no, I, I love it. Let's lock in uh, Morona right now, and yeah. Not lose more on those odds. Right? Straight up. All right, up next, we got another ladies fight. I know we're both super, super pumped about these today. So we got Miranda Granger coming in. She's at, you know, sitting at a nice, pristine seven and one record. She's fighting Ashley Yotter, who, you know, I believe one of her most recent losses was against uh, Marcos, who we we're going to see earlier in the card. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, so, yeah, this is going to be a good one. Tee it up for us. Yeah, so, I mean, here's the thing. I think Ashley Yoder is, again, look at those records of those fighters who have been around a little while in the, in the women's divisions, you know? They all have, they're all very close. They, they've all fought close, each yeah. other. Uh, their records kind of represent, you know, seven and six here in this case. But th it's just mm -hmm. very close fights, man. And, and I think in this case, you're looking at a girl who's seven and one, and now we're seeing a difference in that, right? A lot of girls are starting to come in with these really buffed up records in the UFC, coming into UFC, and we're seeing a lot of juice there in, in, in our favor. And I do believe that Randa Marcos is a much better uh, fighter than a plus 162 in that fight. I have to believe that. I really do. Mm -hmm. And so looking at this one, I mean, Ashley Yoder, I, I, I really hope that she's the favorite because of the experience and only real losses are to good fighters and i don't see a size advantage or anything but she's got the experience so in her case that that minus 150 to minus 200 rating looks great but even when you look at granger right that seven one record to anyone who's been a recency bias gambler in the ufc is going to see that and be like you know that looks pretty damn good let me hop on that but striking looks a bit sloppy in her last fight she got choked out against the fence in a very weird way like someone kind of had her in, in in half guard and it really just finished it in in what was kind of an extremely dominant top position from what was basically half guard against the fence so she had no way of getting out of it and was completely slept and so those things mm -hmm. kind of scare me when you're coming to the UFC, you know and so i really believe she's a plus 130 plus 190 underdog there maybe worse yeah i mean i to be honest this is a straight pick em. wow i mean you know what yeah I so absolutely do you see value like on either side yeah, yeah, of course. I think I think we're jumping on Yoder. I mean, if you're telling me she's a plus one ten, I'd rather plus minus one fifty, minus two hundred. That's a that's a fighter I'm gonna put the put, put the bucks on. To be honest, I'm down. She's a little cutie too, so let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're gonna be laying uh, on Ashley Yoder pretty soon Definitely. here as well. So that that that's three we're laying early. So just make sure you guys follow along. You know. Most definitely, you know, and, and Pies is going to keep wrapping them up as we go. And so, yeah, exactly. So we're going to be taking Marcos early. We're going to be taking Morono early and Yotter early. Stay tuned for what we decide between the Smolka and the Defratis fight. My boy, list them off. Let's go. Moving on. All right. So this one, I know you, this is probably the fight you're most excited about on the card this weekend. It is, you know, the pre cream of the crop ladies fight. Mm -hmm. Two 20-year, one-year-olds just giving her. We got Kay Hansen. Uh, Kay Hansen, she actually, she's the one who actually beat Jin Yun Frey recently. Um, and, you know, at 21, she looks like a beast. She's coming in against Corey McKenna, another 21-year-old. Um, so, yeah, tell us a little bit more about this one. Yeah, so that, you know, McKenna is actually a Dana White contender sees alumni. And she was, she was a pretty big underdog in that fight against, you know, what was uh, supposed to be a really big grappler. But her striking came into play, her grit. Her ability to grapple and get into you know offensive positions came into play. She she won that fight fair and square. It was really fun to watch, and she has that look of a prototypical underdog. And one thing I want to say about this fight is let's give a round of applause to women's fighters because they're developing you know their own sense of game plans in terms of like 
all these different fighters that we've seen, we're seeing really, really, really different array of striking, grappling, and things like that. And I think this fight, you're going to see a fighter who's, you know, a decorated wrestler, you know, your Daniel Cormier's of such, but, you know, that that idea of things that against this, you know, mm-hmm. European, you know, grip like a, uh, a Michael Bisping, you know, you can sell these fights that way. And I think that's something that you couldn't really do before because not only was it something that you couldn't really put together when it came to weight classes and who was willing to fight, but right now we have such good talent that we're able to kind of really sell these fights. And that's what I'm excited about. I love that analysis, man. That was a great, great comparison and kind of something that, you know, like you said, the casual over here, that gets me excited. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Definitely, because those are the types of uh, fights that you want to see, you know, the people that everybody wants to talk about, but the person that kind of you look and you're like, hey, that last fight, I mean, that wasn't no fluke. Like you, you withstood a lot there. Mm hmm. And so between these two, you know, 21 year olds, where do you see kind of the advantage going? So here's the thing. When you talk about these kinds of fights, right? You have to give the advantage to Hanson. You just have to. And to me, it's like a minus 250 to a minus 300. Like you just can't see that any other way because anyone who knows fighting is going to know her. But then you look at what McKenna did on, you know, Dana White's Contender Series, the type of fighter she is. She's if, if, in, in a good sense, I think she could be a plus 140 because I just see the hype behind my, uh, Hanson too high. But plus 250 might not be out of the question. Yeah, and I mean, I remember even, you know, before even looking at this card, your excitement behind, you know, Kay Hansen back fighting, you know, like, so excited to see this girl. And and to be honest, it seems like we might get some good value on there because she's only, you know, about a minus 200, 220 favorite. But you know what's funny to me, Pies, is that that's the thing, right? In this fight, and not to compare it to my boy Cormier, you know, your boy too now, I know you love him too, but that oh, Vegas yeah. straight baby, love let's DC. get it. Um, but you know, we were there, Steve Bay, that double champ, you know, I love those guys. <laughs> it is, it is interesting in this case, you know, because that, that, that grit might last, man. It, it still took her a little bit of time to, to catch Jin, Ginny Frey and, and catch that mm-hmm. arm bar, you know? And so one thing I'd want to say is, is that juice on McKenna, who seemed to have that youthful striking, a little bit of footwork to bring to the table, something that might be able to you know, at least try to defend some of these takedowns because you know that's what's coming. I just see Hanson being the favorite and it being ridden out all week because, you know, mm-hmm. McKenna just seems like that kind of fighter that people are going to look at and just won't see. What you kind of saw on Dana White's contender series, if you analyze that fight, you analyze what she was up against, you see that adversity, maybe she gets some juice. But, I mean, in your history of seeing the line movements and what we've kind of analyzed, what do you think? Uh, to be honest, man, you know, from what I've seen in terms of decorated fighters, in terms of people who have credibility, you know, us talking about Hanson's last fight, uh, you know, it would not surprise me, even given your initial analysis, that this could move up to a minus 250, minus 260, minus 270, even minus 300 closer to the fight. You know, and that, that's what kind of scares me sometimes of some of those fights where we rely too much on that Rocky Balboa story, you know? Every sometimes mm-hmm. it just happens like it goes like the first Rocky. That's why Rocky's my favorite movie. Like, it, well, not my favorite movie, but it's up there, right? Like, it's something I've watched a million times because it's just so real and I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, stay tuned for that one, but this might be one that we lock in a little earlier given uh, the projected line movement. All right, so up next, we got uh, another bout between Antonio Arroyo versus Eric Anders. You know, we've seen Eric Anders a few times before. Arroyo, I believe this is his first fight in 2020. So, you know, looking forward to seeing him get back in the ring and see what, you know, where he's at in his career. They're both coming off of losses, so there will be that motivation factor there. What do you see here? Yeah, so it's funny you say that, right? So I, I really believe this is a fight that Eric Anders does not want to lose. You know, he's a four and five mm-hmm. UFC fighter to go four and six, you know, let alone to be something where he should be a pretty big uh, favorite to go, you know, have that chance at five and five right now is, is big for him. I, I think he needs to take that into consideration when he's training, when he's trying to maintain this career as a fighter. You know, he's getting a chance right now on a main card. I mean, you know, biggest opportunity in his life, you know, Machida split decision loss. Like he's been, he's been close to getting to a new level. Right. And so there's, mm-hmm. there's some real aspirations there. The only real person to score a finish against him is baseball. Well, the, the knockout is basically uh, Tiago Santos. 
So we just saw oh, him wow. fight Glover in that beautiful fight. So, you know, I, I really believe that there's there's some value there if we're getting it on the line. But again, this is what I love about Antonio Arroyo. His kicks are on point. And with a guy like oh, Anders, okay. I mean, unless he's coming at you regularly, I think you get tired taking these body kicks. I mean, if Arroyo's got a smart camp, body kicks, body kicks, body kicks, leg kicks. Tire this man out if you cannot knock him out, you know, and, and choose your and just slow him wise. down. T- yeah, t- take some you know tools out of his arsenal. Yeah, because you don't want him to be able to kind of either throw heavy punches for much longer than the first round. And the big thing is you don't want him to be able to grapple you late and just kind of lay on top here. He's going to be strong. He's going to be big. But you're going to be the guy that's going to be able to throw some real strength to say the things like your legs and your body. Really slow a big guy like that down. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. I think lines-wise, minus 120, if, if I'm being generous to Eric Anders, but, yo, he could be as low as a, as a plus 160, plus 170, given what we've seen from Arroyo. And Arroyo is a minus 150 to a plus 120, maybe, in my mind. So Anders actually does come in getting that respect, uh, you know, kind of wanting to make that name for himself to keep him on the main card, keep himself relevant. He They are giving him about a minus 150, minus 160 favorite in this one. Interesting. And so, as you can tell, even by my lines, like, it's such a close fight, man. And you said it best earlier. It's it's one of those things where you can go back and forth when you create the narrative, right? You know, with Hanson, mm-hmm. it was the same thing. And in this case, you know, I see so much potential in Arroyo, but at the same time, is Anders hungry enough to try and make his, you know, 10th UFC fight a win, you know, at least go 500, if he still wants to continue, that's still up to him. But, you know, to at least go 5-5 five and five in the UFC is a big deal. That's that's, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. To have a split decision loss against Machida is a big deal. You know, that that's the big thing with fighters. You know, everyone's not going to get that, 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 that end glory. But this is a big opportunity for him. And so I do see that value in uh, Eric Gondas right now. Perfect. So I, I, you know, I'm, I'm on board to take this one. I think the uh, motivation will be there for the vet. I think, you know, so much of his career depends on how he performs in this fight and that motivation should take him over the top. Yeah. And that, that's the other thing, right? You haven't really duffed one yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful word. Uh, duff, duff, duff beer. <laughs> this is sponsored by Duff Beer. No, it's not. I wish it was. The Simpsons, Mark Groening, reach out. You like The Simpsons fights? I love The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, bro. I used to read the comics. And I, and I normally don't love cartoon comedies. But yeah, that's we had that conversation. Good. See, I'm the opposite. I absolutely grew up watching them. I love them. Everything I've seen, except for Dragon Ball Z 2. I was a little, which is amazing. Now I'm obsessed. <laughs> All right. And so that leads us into the next one. You know, earlier you asked me which fight am I most excited about. I didn't want to reveal my cards yet, just as of yet, because <laughs> I wanted to talk about it here. But <laughs> I am really pumped for this one. Uh, Brendan Allen, he looked ready to go last week. He comes in hot. I he know. He wants to fight right now. And it was like, you know, someone just took it away from him last week. You could tell the disappointment in his, you know, social yeah. media and stuff. So it's nice to see him get back on this card. And he gets back on the card against the dude. I swear we saw him fight like two weeks ago, man. Did Sean Strickland literally just not fight? Yeah, bro. This is one of my boys. You know about Sean Strickland. So, remember, motorcycle guy. Here's my thing. I really believe in that fight. He chose to go three rounds. I do think he could have taken it to the ground and maybe explored the option of finishing, you know, via submission or something like that. Even ground and pound mm-hmm. if he wanted to. It, it seems like he was testing out the knee, testing out the body, seeing how he lasted. He had a good little striking battle there. He won the fight, no problem. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure you watched that fight together, too. I mean, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, this was definitely one of our uh, public plays, I believe. It was Tarzan, uh, even though the fight he was fighting. <laughs> Woo, speaking uh, of hair, look at that shit. Woo, let's get it. <laughs> That's for Sean Strickland. Right there, that bond. <laughs> and so, yeah, he, you know, he, he was in that motorcycle accident, so it was great to see him come back, dominate the way he did, and... You know, I'm really excited to see him get back in the ring and to get back in the ring this quickly, like, you know, kudos to the man. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's, it's one thing, but I mean, here's the thing. I'm a little now concerned, right? 
short notice fight almost if you will right we fought so the so definition recently. of short notice fight. Right? so he, <laughs> he's now getting to weigh in at 195 even less weight to cut he really appreciated fighting at 185 because he didn't have to cut as much weight now so cuts even less weight for this fight because it's now catch weight um you know brendan allen lucky enough in gets the fight again poor you know all the best to high niche as you lovely put it uh in, in the speedy <laughs> recovery you know all jokes aside you know, that, that's the joke coronavirus hopefully he does get better but you know alan does get a fight pretty quickly you know so turnaround is good for him he's a good all on fighter he's actually on a seven win streak dating back to his uh, lfa record. i was gonna say yeah he comes in hot he really does sizzling. and sizzling bro finish on the dana so this is the kind of way i want to put it right Think of your classic way. If this was a video game and you were like playing career, right? And it was like the newest video game. Look at that seven win streak out of LFA. We got a first round finish on Dana White's Contender Series. Then we got a three and zero UFC record. Like this is literally playing the story mode. You know what I mean? Absolutely. He's building his career from the ground up, and he's doing it in the right way. Yeah, it's got he's got guys like you know uh, our boy Kevin Holland on his finish record, which is crazy. So question for you, I know you uh, kind of have hype around both these guys. You like, you know, what both of them are about. Mm -hmm. If you had to lean one way, odds aside, you know, don't even worry about that. If you had to lean one way, which way are you going? So I have to lean Strickland overall. You know, Brendan Allen might have it and can prove me wrong, but Sean Strickland in my mind had it. He really lost to good competition. He was, he was fairly young at the time. And, you know, I think he's trying to approach the, the game in the right way. He's getting a chance to fight again. It's a tough fight. And I think this is a huge boost for his career. And it could springboard him to where maybe he should be at this point, despite the motorcycle accident. So he seems fairly serious. I think without the weight cut, he's going to be able to go in there and showcase a bit more. I'm a little disappointed that maybe he didn't try to take the, take the fight to the ground in the last fight a little bit. Uh, Brendan Allen might try to do that, right? If the striking game's not going so well, Brendan Allen has the skills to do quite a bit. So that's where we're gonna have to see what really comes into play. But Strickland's striking looked good in the last fight, and I think that's gonna show in the in, in the in the picks. And yeah, that's a real interesting take, you know, because even given our analysis last week of Allen versus the high knees, uh, you know, <laughs> you were very high on. <laughs> you were quite high on Allen as well, right? And so you know, having that fight taken away from him, but him having to fight Tarzan it's it's a much tougher boat for him yeah I think this is a huge step for both fighters right where Strickland should where Strickland should be and where um Alan thinks he should be going like this is a big win for him too and will probably get him the fight he's looking for next time out so you know lines I mean minus 110 to a plus 150 for Strickland if you know recency bias is eating away at Allen and I think Allen could still be an underdog here. So even if he's getting that minus 105, minus 120, I could still see him being a plus 150, a plus 160 in this fight. Yeah, and I mean, it looks like the analysis is very similar to kind of what you're thinking mm -hmm. in the sense that, you know, Allen comes in as, you know, the person who might be a little more prepared for this fight. You know, he's been itching to go, but Strickland, you know, has a little bit more in his arsenal and that kind of stuff, even though he only has had a week to prepare for it. So it's actually a straight pick -em. Nobody's favored. It is going to be a, a very tough fight to call, and that's why I gave you that loaded question. <laughs> it's because you knew I was going to basically say it was. Like, my, my lines basically said that this could be a straight pick -em. That's insane. Pick -em, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, right, if we had so... to pick someone, there it is. Shiny Strix. Yep, I, I asked you gun to your head. So, you know, if there is a lean on that one, it's Strickland. Mm -hmm. Let's wait for the weigh-ins, kind of see what dudes are looking like. But, you know, we've, we've seen both of these guys recently. So I, I, I think we're going to lean Strickland there. Man, I have so much heart bias. And for the first time there, you kind of used it in a way to get us an advantage. Good for you. Maybe you should start doing that more often, sir. <laughs> Last time I did it, I ruined the odds for you. You weren't too happy, so. Yes, you don't save the odds, Gotta my guy. Gotta pick and choose my moments. Yeah, don't, don't, don't say the odds, my guy. Do everything else. Yeah, I mean, a, a, you, you read a little into my question there. You, you could probably tell what the odds are going to be. Hey, that's not true. That's not true. I think there was enough, like I said, there's enough heart in this where you could have been like, well, I know this guy's going to pick Strickland. So let's just see if I can get him to, to think differently, you know? Touche, touche.
All right. And so up oh, next, baby. we got a heavyweight bout. These are my favorite, obviously. So we got uh, Mr. Kong, Don Tail Mayes. And he's fighting Roque Martinez, who we actually just saw get knocked out against Romanov, who fought last weekend in a dominating performance. So, you know, we have a little bit of history there with Mr. Martinez. Give me a little information on Mr. Uh, Kong here. Well, see, what I... What I... <sighs> Don't enjoy about this fight looking at it from, you know, individual fighter perspective. It's not going to be very exciting, my guy. And you know what's hilarious is sometimes no. I don't know if you get excited about it being a real heavyweight fight of athletic guys throwing serious bows or just being comical. <laughs> I think it's a good combination of both. Depends who you're getting. Yeah, so be lucky you. I think ding, 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 ding. This might be the one. So here's the thing. I do not believe Martinez is going to stop throwing. Now... Mace, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a little, he's, he's not, you know, the rock when it comes to being in shape at that level of weight, but he, he's, he's got his power. He's got the power in the hands. Um, he's going to have that puncher's chance in this fight. That's about all I can really see there. If Mace is smart, this fight goes to the ground fairly shortly. I think Romanov painted a beautiful game plan. If you can execute it very similarly, mm -hmm. that's a pretty good way of trying to, you know, get this fight uh, as a W under your belt. Now, looking for uh, Rock Martinez, I think, you know, fighting, fighting a guy like Romanov already should be a positive. I think that's something where he can take that to the bank and be like, well, you know, hopefully I can try to get my ass up against the fence or get my ass to my feet or just stay on my feet as much as possible mm -hmm. and avoid those positions, you know? And do you see an improvement in his takedown defense there? Uh, these are the things that we kind of leave up to coaches and the game plans now. Is it, mm -hmm. is, is it been long enough for him to uh, really, uh, you know, attend Inclu to these issues? To his arsenal, yeah. That's the one thing we have to kind of look at. But I do believe there's a shot here for him. I do not think that you can look at uh, our boy Mays's, uh you know, fight history and tell ourselves, you know, this is a massive favorite. I really don't. I think, you know, the weight discrepancy might look a little different. But from a true fight perspective, I mean, Mays doesn't totally impress me. And I feel like he kind of gets tired towards the end. Um, he's swinging a lot. And I think that he's going to be able to get caught, you know? And, and that's where mm -hmm. a guy like Martinez is only looking for those chances. That's, that's the one yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. And so in terms of odds, what are you kind of hoping for here? Yeah, I mean, you know what? Let's let's give Mays the, the odds on favorite in terms of the minus 200s. I don't think he can be more than a minus 200, minus 210, but he could be a minus 110. But, you know, our boy Martinez here could get some juice, maybe a plus 150, maybe a minus 110 pick him, but I don't think the pick him is, is something that we can see here publicly. Now, plus 150 was right on the dot. He's actually a plus 150 underdog, minus 190 favorite coming in for Maze here. Wow. And Pies. Ding, ding, ding. Sounds like he has ding, a puncher's ding, chance. Ding, yeah, ding, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Binga, binga, bing, bing. So what I was going to tell you, actually, this is a fight where we're going to be looking at the under 100%. I don't care what the odds look like. It's probably going to be in the minus 200 or 300. I don't know if they're up yet. I don't think they are. You can give it a look right now. No, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's something that we're going to definitely be looking at. Uh, so when it comes to our parlays, we've been really good with picking pretty solid guys. So let's take let's take a look at that when the time comes. Yeah, this is one that we you know don't see going the distance. So you know, keep an eye out for those odds as well. One hundred percent. All right, and up next we got Mr. Comedy <laughs> here, Mr. Comedy uh, Saparbag Safarov is fighting Julian or Julian? 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 <laughs> yeah, definitely Julian. All right, Julian Marquez. This dude's looks scary, man. This is a scary looking dude here. Yeah, so I mean, he he really was. He was a big tough. He was a big tough guy. Like, I mean, when I say tough guy, I mean you know the Ultimate Fighter guy. And yeah, yeah, guy. not just like oh, he's a tough guy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he ain't just a tough guy. He's a he's a tough guy, like a like a the Ultimate Fighter guy. So I, I really yeah. like what what he brings to the table. He hasn't fought that much. That's that's the, the one thing. He might be a, a name to to guys who have followed the fights for that long, but I mm -hmm. think there's there's some there's an opportunity for him to really really get back into the UFC against a guy like Safarov. Now, I would put Saparbek Safarov in probably my top twenty fighters of all time. I think. Wow. That, 
Wow. Well, let's be honest. We he's, watched... your, he's your Jameis Winston, eh? Uh, he's, he's my Jameis Winston. Winston, Winston. Eh? Let's think back. I made <laughs> you watch uh, the entire fight with me between him and Gian Vellante. That's two, com- oh my uh, that, God. That, that, that's two pieces of comedy gold just smacking together and creating absolute Emmy awarding, Emmy award winning television, ESPN, fight of the year. It is what it is, you know, <laughs> don't at me kind of thing, but that is the way to go. What did you think? Legitimately, of that? never, never seen a man throw a leg body kick and then check if his leg is hurting. <laughs> How many times? <laughs> Whoa, on more than one occasion in the same fight. I couldn't believe that is it. Comedic goal. I was on the floor and there was one scene where I don't even think I showed you, but he's actually on the ground, bro. They're both on the ground, and he sees an opportunity where they're face to face, both lying on their stomachs, and he just swings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this man is too good. I am so excited to see him fight. He's an absolute legend. I think he should be put in the UFC Hall of Fame. I think, you know, <laughs> I think there's there's been no one uh, more memorable to have braced the UFC octagon. And so, you know, your favorite part, let's talk some odds. You know, one in three UFC fighters, there's a reason he's getting the fights because he's my boy. He's the legend. He's the UFC potential Hall of Famer. Separ Bexafarov, we'll say plus 140 to a plus 200 underdog with Marquez maybe getting a minus 190 to a minus 110 favorite here. (laughs) And you can even see a little bit of your bias coming in there. Mm Because this goofy man is not that close. He's mm-hmm. actually a plus 250 underdog. Uh, Julian comes in at over a minus 300 favorite in this. No. I didn't even give him the 200 range. Yo, Julian <laughs> saw it. I think, I think an under is a very good opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we can't, we can't bet against our boy because it's just too much comedy. But, you know, the under seems like a beautiful play there. Don't forget to check out our full reaction to the Separ Vex Afarov and Gian Vellante fight when my boy Paisan watches it for the first time ever. I've seen the fight at least six times. UFC Fight Pass, thank you for that. Paisan, don't forget to tell them what you thought about that. Oh yeah, anybody who needs a good laugh first thing in the morning, I would recommend throwing on that fight. Take the 10 minutes, watch our reaction video to it. It is fucking hilarious. And, and kudos to them for, you know, it, it was a good fight. All in all, jokes aside, good fight. But yeah, some absolutely amazing moments. Yeah, and even even jumping into that fight, we saw our boy, the cut man, Brandon Tate, jumping oh. in there with some reactions. Had to fix Two-Face right away. <laughs> Yo, my God, that's my boy. That's my boy for years, man. We've seen him. He has reactions on tough that are difficult to find, but he's been doing it for years. And I feel like hardcore is that... Definitely look at this man whenever he's working for those reactions. You, you got that one, one right? For yeah, me? You yeah sent that I got one that one. Send Let's that pull one. it up. Yeah, pull it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> yo, his body just tightens up and he just starts looking around. I'm dead, yo. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be a great fight. And let's hope uh, he's in the corner of Mr. Safarov again. That would be legendary. Brandon Tate, um, I keep thinking of the football player, but, you know, I should definitely always think about you. Uh, please take that take that fight on. Please request it. I, I, I beg it. The please. real Golden Tate. <laughs> yeah. Here's the petition to start right now. Uh, Brandon Tate, the cut man, to be the special cut man for the Safra fight on Saturday. And for every fight, really. <laughs> if possible, but... This weekend would be a blessing. All right. And that moves us on to our co-main event. Uh, You know, a dude that we're recently familiar with in Abdul Al-Hassan. You know, we did take him. Not in a good way. Not in a good way. Oh, he was a heavy, heavy favorite and came out swinging, man. We thought this could be over, but he used up all his energy real early, wasn't able to last, and in the Mm -hmm. end did not come out on top. So he's fighting Chaos Williams, who we actually touched on a little bit earlier with that crazy knockout. Mm-hmm. This guy, again, another dude who comes in sizzling. I think he's won seven in a row as well. You know, he's definitely looking to make a name for himself in this co-main event. 
Yeah, so it's one of those things, like, let's just touch on why we, we have that bitter taste in our mouth with Alessane. And I mean, as a, as a MMA lover, it, it's just the prototypical aspect of trying to tie yourself out. You know, it was beautiful to see him try to get the finish, but at the same time, like, be smart. You know, the guy looked really good. And big shout out to uh, Munir Laziz, right? Like, he knew exactly what to do in that situation. He had his he had his guard up. He was against the fence. Used some head movement. Uh, got his got his you know used his footwork to get, to get himself out of danger regularly. And as long as he got himself out of that first round, the rest was his. You know, that's the mm -hmm. problem with Alessandra. I just think these top heavy fighters have something to work on. Funny fact, you remember our boy Alexander Hernandez? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so they actually trained together, and I believe that that was something that Alex Hernandez had to work on, which is what I mentioned when we talked As about well. him. Yeah, absolutely, and we, and we saw the fruits of that labor recently. Mm -hmm. And so Fortis MMA seems to be doing something really, really good right now with their fighters, and I think Al Hassan has something to gain here, and I think on paper he still could have that edge with, with what he's had to, I guess, learn from that fight. But, I mean, you said it best, right? That Morono fight is, is no joke. The guy's riding a win streak, so close enough where I see Williams being a plus 120, plus 180. Uh, and Alassane, he could hit the minus 300 range, but I see him falling maybe into a minus 180, minus 190, and I'll let you take over from there. He's actually just uh, slightly higher, around 225. Your upper end echelon for Mr. Chaos Williams is right on on par there. You said about minus 170, or plus 170, 180. He's about plus 200. Um, so just on that upper end of the echelon there. And what are your thoughts when you when you kind of think about what we've seen from Al Hassan and and you know Williams being a guy who who might be able to take a bit of a beating in the beginning and use his wrestling and, and grind this out? To be honest, I mean, based on the camps that they come out of and what we saw in Al Hassan the first time, you know, he does have that power. I think he's going to kind of conserve it a little bit to try and pick and choose when he should be throwing his shots as opposed to just swinging wildly and using all of his energy. I do see him kind of being a little more tactical this time, conserve that energy, know you're going up against another beast of a fighter you know, who has that endurance in him. And I'm hoping that he's able to kind of adjust his game a little bit to make it to that third round. All right. So, I mean, there you have it. But if I had to actually pick, I would go in the opposite direction because I actually think we might be looking at a guy who can pull off something similar from a game plan perspective. I, I've watched some tape. He looks like he put guys against the fence. He can definitely uh, grind some guys out. Maybe cardio comes into play, but I don't see Alisson getting that much better that quickly. Like There's going to be mm -hmm. uh, some of that strain on him. And so I, I agree with where the mind's at, but the body might tell a different story when time comes. And so I... I, I I do believe that we, we can see a, a nice upset here. And so we're going to look into that one. Yeah, absolutely. And that Alisson fight, you know, that wasn't too long ago. So like you said, right, there, there's not a, it's not the time Hernandez had after Cowboy Cerrone to kind of get those tools in his arsenal, right? This is a much quicker turnaround. So, you know, maybe that isn't in his game yet. So stay tuned for that one. But, you know, there might be some value on the dog there. All right, and that brings us into this main event. I'm so glad that it happened. Uh, big ups to Paul Felder here, one of my favorite commentators. You know, I love when he's up there with Bisbing. And, you know, good on him for taking this fight, saving this card, making sure we have a main event. I know Dos Anjos was pissed. Uh, you know, he, Ishmael got injured early. Nothing you can do about that one. You know, the other dude that he proposed to fight, wasn't having it. He was too busy, has some shit to do. So, you know, mad respect to Paul Felder for jumping in here. <laughs> I hope he can do it. You know, I've been a fan of this guy for a long time. So, uh, hashtag the other guy being Michael Chandler. I love that. Casual yes. to the max. Yes. I, mean, I love that. And you know what, bro? I don't even care. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. The other guy is Michael Yo, Chandler. The moment someone says they're too busy to take a fight, not even like, oh, I'm not at the weight or whatever, I'm just too busy. It's like, ah, you're the other guy to me now. Because here's what I'll explain to you. Do you remember when Khabib and uh, Gates G fought and they had a back oh, yeah. fighter that weighed in and mm -hmm. everything? It was Michael Chandler. Oh, And so this guy right. did weigh in at lightweight within the last uh, month. Or within the, sorry, I shouldn't say month. Within the last three weeks. So that that's, mm. that's something to say. I mean... 
I do agree with you. I, I think that's something that I don't agree with at all when it comes to fighting. But again, it is what it is. Poor Makachev injured, misses a big fight when it comes to Dos Anjos. And yeah, you know, you feel for a guy like Dos Anjos, he's itching to get back in there, prove his worth. You know, he's lost four of his last five and, you know, he really wants to make his mark in the, in the UFC. So you feel for a guy like that who's constantly getting his fight dropped. Yeah, and, and that's the thing with him, whether it's injuries, whether it's pulling out, like whatever the case may be, I think Dos Anjos is just trying his best to, to get the right fights for himself as well. Uh, what I don't like is what I saw in the Chiesa fight, you know, Chiesa's becoming... Uh, obviously trying to hit that top 10, top 5 mark. And with Dos Anjos, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that as a veteran, I see at least a good outing, see him, you know, get back on the winning track. But at the same time, you know, Paul Felder, man, classic, a, a guy who's probably in shape most of the time. I think when it comes to cutting weight, probably not going to have a problem, right? Not the kind of guy to have those kinds of issues either. Yeah, I don't see it. And similar to what you were just saying as well, like he's around the game so much, you know, he's he's always at these events and, you know, that should help with his uh, preparation for Dos Anjos as well. Mm -hmm. And it's like always a fighter always stays ready. I mean, I I'm curious how ready he was before this. I don't know if he's going to be able to say, go crazy in rounds four and five. Let's be real here. I think he can train for an um, absolute massacre for uh, 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 maybe two or three <laughs> rounds. That's what I'm wondering. And that's what kind of feeds into my my whole shtick here, right? Dos Anjos, a guy who really, really, really needs to get back to what you would consider a championship level fighting, right? And I don't like what I've seen recently. And I think he must feel the same way. Yeah, so based on that, you know, let's jump right into the odds here. What you know, which way are you kind of leaning here? Yeah, I mean, I think Dos Anjos is going to be a heavy favorite, not too heavy. You know, I think there's a guy that, you know, huge, 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 huge fight on the line. Now it's a short, short notice fight. <clears throat> Felder's going to bring that that underdog grace, and and I don't think I can put Paul Felder at anything more than a plus two hundred. I think you can score him at a plus one fifty, plus one sixty. Uh, he hates the betting world. I, I understand. I love you. I love you, Paul Felder. Please don't hate us. Um, I love you. I love you. <laughs> but yeah, he he could he could definitely be a plus one fifty given all everything that goes into this fight. And Dos Anjos, is, he could be a minus two hundred favorite. It is it is something that I, I can see. Did, did you make a trip to the Aria this week and not tell me or something? Uh, I wish, bro. But I would tell you, and you would join me. <laughs> plus one fifty is exactly what the line is for Mr. Felder. Uh, Dos wow. Anjos comes in at minus one seventy. Yeah. Wow. Look at me go. I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely made a trip to that sports book and you didn't tell me, man. I'm hurt. <laughs> this guy left me hanging on an I love you. Count it. I love you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, do you have any leans in this main event? Uh, it's, it's tough to say, but I, I'm just curious... This, I would say if there's two fights you want to wait for the weigh-ins on, it's the Marquez Safarov fight and the Felder Dos Anjos fight. Those are the two fights you okay. really, really want to wait for the weigh-ins on. And maybe the Al Hassan and Williams fight only because both guys kind of walk around really, really thick. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how cut they are coming in. Perfect. So, yeah, stay tuned for that one. Uh, we're going to wait for the weigh-ins for the main event here and, you know, a few of the other ones. But, you know, we've locked in a few picks for you guys. Make sure you take those early so we don't mm -hmm. lose line movement on them. And most importantly, subscribe. Hit that bell button below. Please we do really that. appreciate it. Love that. Our Instagram is there. Tickety, tickety, Our picks will all be up on there. Twitter's up there. Our picks will be on there as well. And yeah, always a pleasure, Siraj. My guy, take it easy. Peace.